The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. I'm Kelvin Hepner for Real Agriculture, and uh, we're joined by Anne Kirk, the cereal specialist with Manitoba Agriculture. And Anne, there's certainly been lots of interest in plant growth regulators, especially this year. We've had ample moisture in the first part of the growing season, and as a result, uh, there's an opportunity to potentially apply PGRs. What do we need to keep in mind when it comes to, I guess, the basics of applying a PGR in Western Canada? Sure, there's a few things that we want to keep in mind. The first is, uh, is the crop under stress? We know that there can be negative effects of PGRs, whether it's a yield decrease or um, you know, some injury on the plants. If we have uh, PGRs applied when the plants are under stress, whether that's drought, excess moisture, heat, insects, diseases. So that'd be the first consideration is, is my plant stressed? And should I really be applying this, this product? Uh, after that, it's good to consider do you actually have a crop that's at risk of lodging or that could benefit from uh, that shorter stature? So did you apply a lot of nitrogen? Is the yield potential really good? Is there a lot of growth in the, in the plant? Um, basically, are you using the intensive management system where PGRs might fit in? And then the third is staging. So staging is very important for plant growth regulators. We do see the best effects of plant growth regulators when they're applied at the ideal timing, which is uh, between growth stage 31 and 32. So just after stem elongation is starting um, and the one to two node stage. So just getting that timing, uh, getting that timing down right is very, is good. Yeah. And you have, and you have some plants to show us what that looks like. Sure. Yeah. So when we are looking at considering timing and staging for plant growth regulators, it's important to go out to the field, uh, dig up some plants from a representative area of the field uh, to take a look at them. So you would be uh, digging up your plants in the field when you want to, uh, look at them you'd be removing any of the stems or any of the tillers and uh, the leaves and then using a knife like a sharp sharp knife to cut lengthwise down the stem right in the middle so you can identify where the tillering node is where the first node is a second node if it's present and then the developing spike or panicle so once you cut those plants open you'd want to look to see uh, you should be able to see like a lighter green greenish yellow spot where the developing spike or panicle is um, you will notice the tillering node at the base of the plant, and then there should be a node, a node developing. At growth stage 30, which is just on the edge of ideal application timing, you'd see that first node there, but it would be less than one centimeter above the tillering node. When we're at growth stage 31, the first node is one centimeter, at least one centimeter above the tillering node. And within growth stage 31, you'll actually see the second node start to develop. And we only hit growth stage 32 when that second node is two centimeters above the first node. And as uh, the plant develops, those nodes are developing, the internode length is lengthening, and that spike or panicle is being pushed up the stem. Okay. So it's not as simple as just counting leaves or doing something maybe from the road and what driving by the field <laughs> yeah that's true and I think it's good for people to really be taking a look at their plants before they think it's the ideal timing because that timing can come on quickly and depending on the environmental conditions that uh, plant can go through those stages pretty quick so yeah I really recommend that people actually cut into those plants and really identify which stage they're at if you want to get the most benefit out of a plant growth regulator okay. So we've had PGRs in Western Canada now for a, a few years. What have we learned in terms of the injury that can happen from a PGR and, and the factors that contribute to that? Yeah, so there have been reports of people having crop injury uh, and some reports of yield decreases due to plant growth regulators. Uh, there does tend to be more injury and yield decrease when it's applied outside of that ideal timing. So uh, PGRs, the modus and manipulator, are both registered till growth stage 39 uh, on the Zadok scale for wheat, oats, and barley. But that's getting very close to the flag leaf timing, so the flag leaf is just starting to come out. And that's when people do see the most negative effects, is when they're applying it like right at the edge of that window. And when you think about what a plant growth regulator actually does, which is you want to be shortening those internode uh, distance, the plant has already done a lot of growth at that stage, so the nodes are developed, uh, the stem has already started to lengthen, so it really makes the most sense to get that plant growth regulator on at the beginning of stem elongation, so you're you know, you're stopping that process much before it starts. Any other tips then for growers when it comes to applying PGRs, Yeah. Uh, I think that a good tip for growers would be to maybe consider doing an on-farm trial with plant growth regulators. I know Manitoba Crop Alliance has been doing trials for the past number of years. And if those trials aren't available, maybe doing your own trial. Uh, they can be a pricey input. So to really just consider if you actually need it. 
and then to maybe do some replicated trials on your farm to see if you if you see any benefit of those plant growth regulators. All right. Thanks for your time. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of crop diagnostics. Thank you. <laughs>